Welcome, scientists. It's Gisa from Butterfly Garden. Our magic door is open today. The story we're going to read is called Alba and the Ocean Cleanup, written by Laura Hawthorne. There was once a small, quiet town that overlooked a brilliant blue ocean. And beneath the surface of the warm, shallow water, there was a beautiful reef. Shimmering fish darted and dived, and strange creatures scuttled into hidden places. Amid the hubbub was a young orange fish named Alba, who lived next to an old spotted shell. Every year on her birthday, Alba found herself something special. She loved things that were spotted, striped, and round. Bumpy, spiky, and bright. Or curvy, swirly, and small. Over the years, she grew and grew. And so did her wonderful collection. But as time went by, Alba found fewer beautiful objects and slowly more trash started to appear. Alba watched the reef change and every year more of her friends left. One year on her birthday, Alba had no one to celebrate with and though she searched and searched, she couldn't find a single beautiful thing for her collection. There was only garbage. But Alba was determined. She kept looking until she was farther from home than she'd ever been. Suddenly, she noticed something glowing in the darkness. It was a pearl. How wonderful, Alba exclaimed. It was just out of reach. She squished and squeezed. Got it, she said. She had the pearl, but now she was stuck. No amount of wiggling would set her free, and all she could do was drift on the ocean current. Eventually, Alba floated to the surface, where a peculiar new world appeared. Giant boats moved on the surface of the water and white lights shone from the land through the darkness. Alba saw a lot of trash. She longed to go home. That night, she dreamed of her old spotted shell nestled in the reef. The next morning, a girl named Kaya was walking along the beach looking for beautiful objects for her collection. She found Alba. Oh no, Kaya said, I'll get you out. And she did. Then she looked at all the plastic bottles and bags. Our trash is everywhere, Kaya said. It's not safe for you here, she said to Alba and put her in a bucket of clean seawater. We've got to clean this up. Kaya told everyone she met about Alba and about how dangerous their plastic and trash were making the oceans. They needed to make big changes. The whole town worked together to clean up the mess they had made. They cleaned it and cleaned and bit by bit, piece by piece, the sea started to get a little safer again. Soon the ocean was clean enough for Alba to return. Kaya said goodbye and released her back into the water. Still clutching her precious pearl, Alba went home to her spotted shell and her collection of treasures. When she got there, she found that most of the trash was gone. On Alba's birthday, she celebrated with her friends in the reef, which was becoming busy and bright again. Alba's pearl dazzled her friends. As they gathered around, she told them the story of a brave girl named Kaya who had worked very hard to make their ocean clean again.
All right, friends. Well, now I want to go over some of the ocean animals that live in the coral reef, the new habitat that we're studying. We've been spending a lot of time on the tide pool habitat, but now we're moving on to the coral reef. So you may have spotted some of these animals in the pages that I just read. And if you haven't, you can watch the video again and see if you can spot them. First up are, let's see, oh, leafy sea dragon. Hello, leafy sea dragon. You are gorgeous. Thanks for joining us today. This seahorse cousin looks just like seaweed and is perfectly suited to the kelp forest in which it lives. The male leafy sea dragon looks after the babies known as fry. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Sea Dragon. Let's see who's coming up next. <gasps> the violet spotted reef lobster. This beautifully patterned reef lobster grows to be only about 15 centimeters, six inches long. It lives in warm tropical oceans near rocky surfaces and comes out to hunt at night. Hello, Miss Lobster. Hello, thanks for joining us today. Bye. <gasps> the Blue Sea Star. With arms covered in suckers, this sea star creeps along the ocean floor, attaching itself to rocks and coral. It's nice to see you. Thanks for joining us. <gasps> the spotted moray eel. Rocky surfaces with hidden crevices are the ideal locations for this snake-like creature to hide in. A solitary hunter, the spotted moray eel, has poor eyesight, but an excellent sense of smell, and a painful bite. Yeah, ooh, I'll stay away from you. <laughs> I was waiting for the clownfish. Hi. These little fish can be found only on coral reefs. They live among the tentacles of sea anemones and have a mucus layer that protect them from the anemone's sting. <laughs> yes, you are protected, aren't you? You like to help the sea anemone and the sea anemone helps you. Ooh. The emperor angelfish. This flat-bodied fish feeds on algae and sponges as it grows into an adult, the patterns on its body become a light yellowish green edged with vibrant electric blue. Oh, and look, your friend, the blue-cheeked butterfly fish. A common sight on coral reefs, these striking fish mate with one partner for life. So they are often seen swimming in pairs. Their tiny snout helps them poke around for their food, coral polyps, and small worms. Hi, you guys. Thanks for joining us. It's so nice to see your bright colors. Well, I hope you've enjoyed exploring some of the animals in the coral reef. Tune in next time when we'll read some more stories and learn more about the coral reef habitat. Remember to like and subscribe so you can find out when our next lesson is posted. Thank you.